Let's podcast. I'm Joe Giglio. Joe Ovius on assignment in Detroit for some youth hockey today. That means we have the Pizza Czar of Raleigh, the Pizza Czar of North Carolina, the Pizza Czar of the Oakwood Pizza Box, Anthony Guerra, sitting in for Joe Ovius. I hope you're ready for the big show today. I'm excited to be here. This is how we started, though. Right? Didn't this is how we this started. Is, this is my Obvious. usual role. I, I like warming up Obvious's seat. Like it's generally, you know, perfect. And we're on different sides of the river today because I need to use the board for premature evaluations. But before we get there, we're here in the Eford Studios. Thanks to my friend Greg Hatem. Thanks to Empire Eats. Thanks to Empire Properties. Do me a favor. Go down to the Rally Times. Get yourself some of the nachos, the the pork nachos with the fresh jalapeno, are definitely the way to go. That's number one. Number two, of course. We're brought to you by our presenting sponsor, Copiers Plus. Drew does such a great job because do you know why, Anthony, as a small business owner, you don't know what you don't know. So do yourself a favor and figure out how to save yourself some money with your print management, your digital management. Go to copiers-plus.com. Big shouts to Copiers Plus. So now that we have that out of the way, it is a Thursday show. And on this show, on Thursdays, we do premature evaluations going to be very careful with your pronunciations there all right let's get this started with nc state at wake forest anthony hang on let's get a little sounder two o'clock at the CW, NC State, two o'clock on the CW, my friends, <laughs> Tom Wormy on the call. NC State has lost nine of their last 10 trips to Winston-Salem. They've won once there since 2001. Of course, the big story here isn't their jinx or their problems in Winston-Salem. Rather, that quarterback, MJ Morris, has decided to redshirt and not play the final three games of the regular season, meaning we will see Brendan Armstrong start in this game against Wake Forest. Brendan Armstrong, you might recall, graduate transfer from Virginia, graduate transfer who started the first five games of this season before he was benched in favor of MJ Morris. Anthony, as a Carolina guy, as a more of an NFL guy than college guy, what was your uh, what are what are your premature evaluations of the quarterback situation <laughs> at NC State? Can you explain to me this red shirt thing? How do you play the year and then you just go, nah, I'm done now. Okay, that's the part of the NCAA I just don't get. And I think the NCAA, the, the classic case of unintended consequences, right? By giving everyone a free year during the pandemic, they've thrown everybody's eligibility clock off. And so now everybody thinks they can be Sam Hartman. Everybody thinks they can be Devin Leary and play six years. Well, in the case of MJ Morris, whose first year was last year, he doesn't have a six to play five clock. He has a normal clock which he's trying to extend to make money. Totally get all of that. So you're allowed to play in four regular season games. Most players will play the first four games of the season and they say, you know what? Hey, <clears throat> can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm going to shut this thing down. But Bo Nix is older than you, Joe. <laughs> Another. Yes. <laughs> Bo Nix is literally going to apply for an AARP card soon. And the guys, I, I'm supposed to buy him as a college quarterback. You think uh, State has a chance to win this game? With a new quarterback, I I, no, I have a take no, on this. No, okay, no. I'm I thought sorry. I thought NC State was going to lose this game. Yeah, I still picked it on picks and pizza for them to, on. Uh, I still picked it on Law of the Wolf for them to lose this game because I will never pick NC State to win at Wake Forest. I actually think this increases their chances because they beat they beat Clemson, oh. they beat Miami. Normally, when NC State wins football games, their head gets a little too puffy, gets a little too inflated. And they end up losing. Okay. Well, now you have everybody taking a shit on them because their quarterback decided to take a knee. So it goes back to the other way. It goes back to the Duke, the post Duke. You guys suck. You'll never win another game type thing. Yeah, but my guy, my guy who leads my offense goes, you know what, guys? I'll see you next year. Or maybe not, depending on if they get them enough NIL money. Right. I'm, I'm in or maybe not. I'm going to hang out for you. You guys go fight this one. I'm out. Nah. No, nah, you're not. The team's going to be deflated. You're not buying it. Uh, it. Unless Dave Dorn gets a red cup out. I need the red solo cup from Dave Dorn before the game. I was going to say, it was after the game. I need it before. You know, he's always I need feeling it now. good that way. All right. <laughs> Moving on, we've got Duke at Carolina, 8 o'clock ACC Network. Congratulations to our ticket winner for 
getting those four tickets to see Duke at Carolina. Thanks to UNC Athletics. Thanks to SeatGeek. And again, if you can't get into that game, go to SeatGeek.com. They're the official ticket partner of UNC Athletics. Mac Brown, 4-0 and in the, uh, the 2.0 Mac Brown era against Duke. Kind of important because Carolina had lost the previous three games to the Blue Devils. So 8 o'clock ACC Network special should be our friend uh, Wes Durham over there in Chapel Hill on Saturday night. Anthony, how are you feeling about your alma mater on Saturday oh, night? Oh, man, how am I feeling about this? I feel like, unfortunately, this is the way UNC football goes. Okay. Your theory <laughs> about the horseshoe, the horse, the lucky horseshoe in UNC's bag all the time that they get all of it. Now, this was a great call. At the bar at Oakwood Pizza Box, we discussed this, passionate UNC fans, leading into the Virginia game a couple weeks ago. I said, Moneyline Virginia? No. Moneyline Georgia Tech? And I will Moneyline every single game UNC loses the rest of the year. Unfortunately, maybe I'm a pessimist. All right, we'll get into some more about the Heels and the Blue Devils uh, coming up in a little bit. But now let's move it on to... Uh, I think your favorite coach in college football right now. That's right. We've got Michigan at Penn State. This is the noon kick, the big noon game on Fox. Michigan, four-point favorite in this game. Michigan unbeaten. Michigan, in my opinion, is going to win the national title. They are now the betting favorite, equal with Georgia at plus 240 to win the national title. I think... I. I I'm Penn State. I'm mad this is not the whiteout game. I'm Penn State. I'm mad this is not a night game. This is a noon game because there's a there's this weird archaic Big Ten rule Ridiculous. where you have to get like night games approved uh, at, so after October. This is a noon kick. I actually think it helps Michigan. Uh, by the way, James Franklin is two and two at home against Michigan. Three and six against Michigan because he did beat him in the in the two bad Harbaugh years in 2019 and 2020. Two and two at home. I, I wish this was a whiteout. I wish this was a later kick. What says you about the Wolverines and the Nittany Lions? Has Connor Stalins been to Penn, Happy Valley? Does anybody know? <laughs> of course, do he we has. know? Is it, you mean is he there now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm only gonna have one shot at this. This cheating scandal thing is absolute. I could, yeah. it's horse shit. Yeah. What a pile of garbage this is. Guys, if the NCAA cared about cheating, put the mic in the helmets and let's stop with the high. The, I got to hold the poster up. I got to do the hand signals. Put about, it in the helmet. Talk to the guy. How about this? In baseball, they actually have it on the wristband and it signals to the wristband and you look at it and you do the pitch. That's Why it. don't they have wristbands in football? Don't know. End it. <laughs> if you really cared about ending it, you could end it. Of course. End it. I've been consistent on this one. I'm not a Harbaugh fan, but this is not a, this is not a ban Michigan no. from the Big Ten championship game. This is not worthy of banning Michigan from the college football playoff. I think the CFP has kind of handled this the right way. This one was explained to me about scouting in person. was explained to me actually by my friend David Allred, who, who was a soccer coach at NC State, assistant coach at NC State. And he said, "I because I, one time he worked for John Rennie, who's the head coach at Duke for a long time. And I said, well, why don't you just come with me? We'll go over and we'll go watch Duke. And he goes, I can't. I go, what do you mean? He goes, it's against NCAA rules. I'm not allowed to go watch Duke in person. I'm like, are you being serious right now? He's like, yeah. I, I'm, he's like, think about it. Like Clemson wouldn't be able to drive 20 minutes and go see a future opponent. So he's like, I kind of, he's like, I understand the rule. And I appreciate you trying to bring me over to the game. He's like, but I'm not allowed to go. Yeah, but I mean, you, you watch game tape, right? And you have access yes. to all the game tapes and you have every angle when you log in. Yeah. It's and, not like you're you're limited to the national, bro like, because they have the computer system. Yeah. And this is not what the Patriots did where they went and saw a walkthrough before the Super Bowl and filmed it and said, okay, this is what they're specifically working on for us in the red zone. This is not what happened at Wake Forest where their radio analyst slash former assistant coach was giving away the weekly game plan for what Wake Forest was going to do. Specifically, there were like some trick plays and some other things they ha hadn't run. This is merely a very motivated Connor Stallions, a Marine, going out and saying, hey man, uh, I'm like a code breaker. I can figure this out for you. And I love the footage of him on the TCU sideline where he's like holding the play card. And, you know, 
Harbaugh is just kind of like, why is this shit not working? What, what is it's like looking at what's going on? <laughs> because in my opinion, this is not even, and this isn't the Astros sending what the pitch is going to be because I, I thought Deion Sanders answered this one succinctly. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. Is, are you giving credit to my guy, by the way? There was that, A, Harbaugh should stay there. Harbaugh is going to win for this game specifically. They're going to crush Penn State. They're going to come out angry as hell. I think Harbaugh is going to lose it in the college football playoffs. I'm oh, not, you do? Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's going to come close to it. They win. Michigan wins this game, though. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. What well, one more game here in premature evaluations? That is the Panthers tonight at the Bears. Panthers are one in seven. The Bears are two and seven. Technically, the Cardinals at one and eight have the worst record in the NFL. But this game, eight fifteen, Amazon is interesting for this particular reason. The Bears hold the Panthers' number one pick for the 2024 draft. So the Bears are in position to possibly pick number one and number two or number two and number three. How upset are they? They have to, like, jack up their odds here. They can't just lose their way to the top. <laughs> well, it's like, they damn could, it, got, <laughs> Now, they could tie, which might help. The Bears, but I think ultimately, I think How ultimately, the play. I think ultimately, what helps the Bears is to win, because then at least you guarantee that. Because you, you can't really control tanking with your own team, right? But if you you can spot, uh, well, in the NFL, it's hard. Yeah, in the yeah, NFL, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, unless you want to start Tommy DeVito, which we'll get into I, when we get into our NFL. Picks. Who's trying to win? With DeVito is the quarterback but, right now. But no, I, I think you try to. I think you try to keep the Panthers in play for that number one slot, and then if you have a number, if you have a top five pick to go with that, you're on your way to building a new, uh, a new uh, program here. Two nuggets on this one: A, why is the Thursday slate so bad? Take the Thursday game away. <sighs> And the madness. I understand the money. It's terrible. B, this is going to be a kickoff. I was really looking at the, the field goal kickers here and the over-unders on that. Oh. This is going to be ugly. <laughs> we'll get into that in our marriage of both uh, the OG here and our Picks and Pizza podcast. All right. That was Premature Evaluations. Let's see if I can get the end of the end of the second sounder. That's kind of the first down moving on music, but you get the point. Every time we talk about college football here on the OG. It's brought to you by our friends at Wings Over Wings Over Raleigh, Wings Over Greenville, Wings Over Chapel Hill. Ryan Malley is the he is the Oakwood Pizza Box equivalent of Wings in Raleigh. He has the best wings in Raleigh. It's different flavors, the the wing itself is delightful. Uh, I was ecstatic for Ryan. He had a chance to get out with his wife on Tuesday for the OG tailgate. And there was one particular fan who was there with us who was an ECU guy. And it was like two long lost souls finding each other. Cause, cause I think wings over Greenville is like the OG wings over spot for Ryan. And this guy was like, Oh man, it was like meeting his superhero. He, he was ecstatic. So do yourself a favor, go to wingsover.com. He's got free parking here in Raleigh. Just order it online. Wingsover.com park in the back, park for free, pop in, tell them that the OG sent you. And of course, every time we talk about the Panthers here on the OG, it's brought to you by Graffiti Art Bar over in Cary. All right, Anthony, I I'm not the bourbon person of this program, but you can get bourbon at cost on Tuesdays. You can also, I don't know about you, I also love a place on Sunday where I want to watch all of the games. I don't want to flip around. I don't want the sound throwing me off. I want to see the games. I want to just relax, have a beer-flavored beer. You can do that. Downtown Carry Graffiti. We appreciate them sponsoring all of our Panthers coverage this year on both the OG and the Young Gun podcast. If you haven't yet, check out Young Gun. Uh, Dimitri Ravanos and Lauren Brownlow do such a great job. Hyper-focused. You people want laser hyper-focused. We've got Panthers. We've got Bryce Young takes. Check them out. Young Gun. Wherever you get your podcasts, of course, Apple, Spotify, the Googles, all of those good things. And of course, as Joe likes to say, five stars only. Housekeeping. Anthony, do you have an OG OG in your life? OG OG. The OG OG. What is the OG OG? The OG OG is Hayes Lancaster because the lights would not be on in this studio without the support of Hayes Lancaster and the Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority. Here's what you do. I know it's, it's warm. It's colder now. You're thinking, oh, the bugs are gone, Jillio. 
that that might be true, but you got mice in the attic, maybe. You got moisture under your house, too. Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority, they have full service coverage in all of the areas. Again, things you might not know. Do yourself a favor. Go to bugsbite.com. Punch in your zip code. Because Hayes is a OG, doesn't believe in contracts, but he does believe in saving you money. You'll see all kinds of coupons there. Again, it's bugsbite.com. And you know who is also an OG on this program, our friends over at Breeze Through. I don't have anywhere to tailgate this week, but I do have a drive to Greenville to make. And do you know what I'm going to need before I make that drive to Greenville? I'm going to need, from the Breeze Through, I am going to need the dark roast coffee. Are you a dark roast person, Anthony? I am, actually, yep. Doesn't it annoy you when national chains stop serving dark roast at like 10 a.m.? I always feel weird because I drink it all day long. And right. I'm like, wait, I just wanted a coffee. I didn't ask you for something obscure. Right. I and, and I want it dark. I want like your darkest, best coffee. I don't want this watered down stuff. I want the really good stuff. You can get the really good stuff at Breeze Through all day long, all of the locations. I will be hitting the one off of 40 and 42 over in Garner before I find my way over to Greenville tomorrow. So big shouts to Adam over at the Breeze Through and... If you haven't seen it yet, Anthony, vamp for two seconds because you know why. Hold on, hold on, vamping. hold. What is vamp? I don't know what vamping, <laughs> vamping means. means. What the fill, hell's vamping? Fill the air. Fill the air. <laughs> Ho. Hey, gas station beers. Look at that. I like the patch on that hat. It's, this is a that's really a solid, solid hat. hat. I'm that's telling you, shit, that's man. a really solid hat. I love it. And of um, course, I buy that hat for Obvious. And what does he do? He throws it in the box. In yeah, the throw corner. it in the box. In the corner of the Put room. it in the box. See, so yeah, gas station beers. They also have one that says gas station food. Go support our friends over at Breeze Through. Get yourself a nice hat. And big news. We have a new sponsor, new to the OG family. Sleek Fleet. That's sleek-fleet.com. Here's the deal. I use Tyler at Sleek Fleet. He helped us with the OG tailgate. He helped us pick up our winners and get them to the arena. First of all, it's $40 to park at the arena. All right. Now, all of a sudden, if you want to drink a couple beers, you're not feeling great about driving home. Take all of that math out of the equation, man. Do yourself a favor. Go to sleek-fleet.com. Dot com, or you can call Tyler, 919-335-8840. Maybe you want to go out on a night downtown Raleigh. Go over to the Oakwood Pizza Box. Have some dinner. Go out, get some drinks. Go back home. Again, don't have to worry about parking. Don't have to worry about any kind of drinking and driving issues. I can't because now I've got Whitaker and Hamer for you for that. But it's best to stay out of trouble, sir. It is best to stay out of trouble. So give Sleek Fleet a shout. Again, 919-335-8840. Or go to the website, sleek-fleet.com. As it says, ditch your average ride share. I promise you, I promise you, you'll have a much better transportation experience than any of the other ride share apps. Tyler will absolutely take care of you the way that he took care of us for the OG tailgate and for uh, airport runs and for other. Getting in and out of the stadium can be a challenge. Paying for parking can be a challenge. Take all of that decision making out of your hands and leave it in the capable hands of Tyler over at Sleek Fleet. Under the radar this week has gone North Carolina for obvious reasons. The big news was NC State with MJ Morris's decision to redshirt. But I want to talk about Mac Brown. I want to specifically talk about Mac Brown 2.0 and whether you think that has been a success or not. The way that they started this year, they were 6-0. and They looked really good to me. And I will not back off of what I had said then, that they had a path to the college football playoff because they did. And that was the way that they were playing. Their defense looked good. Their defense looked capable. But I'm not a Carolina grad, and I had many people, and I, you were on this fence too, where you were telling me, just wait for the other shoe to drop. And it did with the losses to Virginia, the losses to Georgia Tech. I don't really care about the Campbell game. It doesn't really prove anything other than they're better than Campbell. Awesome. They're 7-2. and two. They go into this game against Duke. They close the year with Duke, Clemson, and State. This is their last home game. They get the Blue Devils. This is a team that Mac Brown has owned. But I ask you, Anthony, has Mac Brown 2.0 been a success? Yeah, for a Carolina guy, yeah. I mean, what are we looking for? Give me some NFL players. Give me some offense. Win some games. Lose some games. Whatever. But give me some talent, 
spread it out, throw the football, make it look pretty. We got some NFL running backs, NFL quarterbacks, NFL wide receivers. I'm good with that. Do I wish they would actually put something together? Yeah, but we're not going to be Alabama. You expect Alabama? I think that's where like the NC State fan sets themselves up for failure because it's like, oh my, he lost. He lost. I can't believe he lost. Yeah, you you lost to Notre Dame or you lost to yeah, no kidding. We're gonna look at the difference in payroll. Sure. Uh, so I posted the uh, tweet Mac 2.0. So this is now this is his fifth season on the, in 2.0. Came back in 2019. All games 37 and 24. ACC games 23 and 16. He's had one top 25 season, which was in 2020. Has not had a 10 win season. Uh, they did win the division last year. They went to a major bowl in uh, 2020, the pandemic year. He's 4 0 against Duke, but he's 2 2 against State, including the game in 21, which I, I State would have run their coach out of town after losing that game the way that they did. The impossible way that they did. That was ugly. That was <laughs> uh, ugly. Max, four and eight against top 25 teams. He is four and five against other power five teams. So of his of his 37 wins in the in the 2.0 era, 10 of them are against either G5 or one double A teams. So against against one A teams, he's 27 and 24. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, that's a rough look on paper, though. I don't, Sam I don't, Howell, Drake May, two top line. Howell is in the NFL. Drake May will be a top five pick next year. Twenty seven and twenty four. Same against, backfield against one A teams. The two NFL, excuse me against against power five teams. Two NFL running backs as well. Javante and uh, Michael Carter with the Jets. Okay, I mean that's a that's a big time. That's a lot of offense. That's yeah, rough... they've had players. To your point, they they there are positives to this. Getting to the Orange Bowl, even in a backdoor way, is something you can, you can hold over NC State fans. Because I am I am of the belief in in all of this that in the triangle, what we are all here for is to to jab and talk to each other and be able to hold our own in these debates and in these conversations. That's all state fans want. That's all Carolina fans want. Now you add Duke in when it comes to Carolina because they really just want to lord their basketball success over Duke. And now that, of course, they have the ultimate trump card. We'll we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, though. The greatest um, ever. Um, I look at Mac 2.0 and I say, I, I, it's a lot like Chuck Amato to me. We'll, there'll be there'll be there'll be yellow colored glasses where you look back on it and go, yeah, man, but Chuck made us care. Yeah, man, but Chuck made us relevant. Ultimately, Chuck never won anything. Okay. And ultimately, Mac is not going to win anything here. He didn't win it his first time. He he's he's in the Hall of Fame. He has a national title from Texas. He will retire without an ACC title, and coaching in the ACC for 15 years. Pat Narduzzi has an ACC title. Okay, so to me, I if, if I'm going to apply my NC State standards to Carolina, I would say we'll look back at it. You'll have warm and fuzzy feelings, but ultimately, you'll look back and go, "What do we have to show for it?" Yeah, I agree. But we also, but Carolina also has this overall feeling of he's a Carolina guy, Joe. He's a of Carolina he, and guy. And he's the ultimate salesman. He is oh, the ultimate he's in a messaging. Carolina guy. If you brought in a guy that came in, lit some stuff on fire, actually won some games, fired up the fan base, but he's not one of us. <laughs> you know, like, what's wrong with him? So we need to get him out of here. So, first four years since you asked for them. Butch Davis, my was, guy, was only there for four years. My guy, twenty-eight and twenty-three, yeah. all games, fifteen and seventeen in ACC play. That compares to Mac Brown, thirty and twenty-two, so similar. Twenty and fourteen. Obviously, Mac has a better conference record than Butch did over those years. Now, the, first the, four years, you the, first the, four years. I'll give you Larry Fedora before you make your okay. Butch point. Okay, first four years, Larry Fedora, thirty-two, twenty-two. 21 and 11 in the ACC. All right. So, so, by, so are we going by the school's standard or are we going by what, or, or do you, which is in football is a different thing than what the school standard is in basketball. Agreed. Right. Yep. Although it'll be interesting to see the standard enforced on, on You're, this, this you, are you really season. coming on this program and giving me, we're not Alabama. What do you expect? No. For I, Carolina football. Oh wait, oh wait, hold on. There isn't a part of you that looks at this year when they're six and zero oh and goes, 
and and has the schedule that they have. No, you gotta you, win the you're games. going to sit here and go, I'm okay with that? No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. No, is that because on, you hold, have all this other on, basketball hold on, hold stuff? On. Is that what it is? It is apathy. Are you a field hockey guy? No. Are you a women's soccer guy? Love the field hockey team, by the way. Right. The great job. Dominance. But I'm just Dominance. saying, if that's what you We're want to talk about, school. that's awesome. No. For, this was, a, this was a, a 50 year storm this year for Carolina that they did not take advantage of. I don't understand. Why do I care more about the Hills than you do? Because, because it's. Why am I more fired up about the Hills than you are? Because I know the Hills aren't going to do anything about it. It's not like they're going to go in and fire Mac Brown and bring Deion Sanders in, which is what I would do. And let's win, we'll win some games. Let's get some players in. Let's pay some people and let's go. They're not going to do that. Right. They're going to look and say, oh, he's a Carolina guy. He's got a sweater on. It's great. Look at my old grandpa. He's great. And he brings in players, and it's great, and it's fine. It does a thing. My freshman year on campus was John Bunting's last year. That was a level of pain, Joe, that no one should ever feel. I've come down from Long Island. I know nothing about UNC football except Julius Peppers played here. Dre Bly was here. I mean, Natron Means. I mean, we, we can go back. I was like, this is a, this is a whoa, not even Lawrence Taylor. I, don't, I mean, LT's before my time. I mean, I, shoot, I'm not that old. <laughs> But no, LT, yeah, we give LT. Of course, LT's there. But my point is, I thought I was watching. I was like, oh, I get to watch the football games in the stadium, and the games are in the late fall. I mean, it's beautiful. I, I'm going to I go to games. There's no one there. There's The team was just a mess. It was a disaster. So, yeah, so when... So you're saying your bar is, is when low. Butch comes in and we get players and there's actually a reason there's something to watch on the field. It's like, thank God, yes. And maybe we're building, we're building, we're building, we're building, and then we hose him because we're gonna we're gonna blame him for the academic struggles. He got hosed, and then you bring Fedora in. Fedora takes Fedora takes Butch's players, wins some games, and then never does anything else with it. I mean, listen, I think a lot of what I judge Mac Brown on now is who is next. Mac is seventy. I was gonna say seventy two. This is seventy five years. They're, you're losing Drake May. There's no obvious successor. That doesn't mean you can't go into the portal. But do you how much how, how much longer do you think Mac wants to do this for? This is actually this kind of ties into our pizza question of the week. There's wants and needs in your life, right? Yeah, but what do I would, you, do you want to do this or do you need to do this? But this is where if I'm the AD, I, we're having a talk right now. Mac, listen, love you, my man. You're around. You're an ambassador to the program. You're the the chairman of the board. We need we we're going to be the head of the collective. A hundred percent. Oh my God. <laughs> we, we, Sorry, just, I might have just broke. Uh, <laughs> I might have just given Carolina too good of an idea. Oh my God. Imagine how much money is going to just be like <laughs> flying in. Like, they're just going to have him go do ESPN interviews, be an ambassador for us. I mean, pay him whatever the hell he wants. He's going to make so much more money for us. It's great. But who is going to take this program, pick it up and run it down? Like we got to go do something. I mean, how many years in a row can Mac Brown watch the defense do what the defense does? Do you tell me there's no one in the portal that can play defense? Thought, or is it a systematic thing? Yeah. Or like what's going on? I thought the changes that they made this year, again, I'll go back in those first six games. I thought they had straightened some of this stuff out. And I honestly I like the schedule that they played against because I know some people are like, oh, their their early season schedule wasn't that tough. No, that they played some tough teams in the how first six they, games. How of the many year. Of the next three games are they winning? I will be surprised if they win two. I will be. I'm shocked. I think they could win. I think they will win Saturday night. I think it'll be closer than most people think because Mike Elko will have that team fired up to play. Um, but that's their third string quarterback. Riley Leonard plays in this game. Duke wins this football game. Oh, I think the, the line might be flipped instead of UNC minus. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be, be that. I mean, UNC's number is true. UNC's number, but they're going to have a hard time beating Clemson. And who, and really, who knows what state's going to look like. I do know that Brennan Armstrong does love to play against Carolina. Oh, well, I got <laughs> stayed all over it. I stayed all over this. Oh, and you said you got a lot of pain. you the worst thing in the world. Hopefully, you don't get yourself into any kind of legal trouble. But if you do, like I have with some of my traffic violations... Go to the world's greatest URL. It's wh.lawyer. W for Whitaker, H for Hamer. Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer. They have you covered for all of your legal needs, whether you're closing on a home, whether you're selling a business, whether you have any kind of family law issues or traffic issues. Again, go to wh.lawyer. Appreciate Josh and Joe for supporting us here at the OG. 
And of course, sometimes you need expert help. You don't need to fall for these terrible billboard slogans on the side of the road. I see one every day about guaranteed offers for your home. People, you, they might as well put sucker on those billboards. You might as well be at the carnival. What are you doing? Protect your number one asset. Go with experts. That's hometown realty. Barry Woodard's crew, from here to the beach, six locations, more than 250 agents. Anthony, if you had 250 employees, do you think you'd have that by accident? If you had six locations, do you think you'd have that by accident or because you're really good? Expert. Expert. Go with the hometown realty family. Go to myhtr.com. And if you want to save money, I've got just a guy for you. You're going to, you need to close on the house. You're going to buy the house. Well, you're going to need to insure the house too. Matt Davis, Matt Davis State Farm, the OG insurance.com. My, speaking of great billboards, actually the opposite, the greatest billboard I ever saw. What happens if I want to talk to an actual person? Well, give State Farm a call 919 779 8277. Give Matt Davis a call 919 779 8277. Save yourself some money. Be like Troy, one of our listeners who saved more than 40% home auto life insurance. Pet insurance, too, man. I mean, you got pet insurance? I got a 12 year old dog, sir. I need I got a 12 year old dog. And that that's coming down the road. These are all things that are covered by Matt Davis. Again, it's the OGinsurance.com. We're moving on. I'm not saying it's a struggle when Joe leaves me to my own devices, but let's just say the pause button has been used heavily today. Let's just say the edit button. We'll also get a workout. Luckily, though, luckily, though, Joe and I, when we were down in Charlotte for the ACC tip off, we were able to put some interviews in the can. This is one of them. Jeff Capel is one of us. Former Duke player, former Duke assistant coach, now at Pitt. We always enjoy the time to sit down with him. So here's that conversation with Pitt coach Jeff Capel. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline at ACC Tip-Off, one of our favorite coaches in the league, Jeff Capel at Pitt. This is our ACC <laughs> expansion welcoming team. I love the wine. That's Feel free impressive. to take it. We brought one for you. That's wine impressive. from California, red or white. And you can't find Texas Pete up in uh, Pittsburgh, so I, I love this. Oh, we I'll, actually, we'll give that to Pliss. Because my wife loves it, we get it from Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah, well, Amazon let's take a Prime bottle, has it. Please. And we then, bought them for you. <laughs> and then the cash, I think the cash is the stuff that SMU is waiting to pick up. Yeah, or I'm these off. players. <laughs> <laughs> one, or the, one or the other. <laughs> uh, okay, since you brought it up, there's a couple years of it now. And, uh, you know, it's a podcast, so I can curse now. Do people give a shit anymore about this stuff? Like, in terms of, like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? Yeah, I think there are people that still do. I think it's the people that are stuck in the old ways. Okay. And you're set in your ways. And I understand that. Like, mm -hmm. I do. I'm not saying it's right, but I understand that everyone's entitled to feel how they feel. Um, I think you saw a politician the other day make a comment about it, like, you know, <laughs> these kids are making millions. Like, it's hard to cheer. That it, wasn't coded at all. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh but the reality is, is that this is here. It's here to stay. These players have earned it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of money being made. And it's interesting, on the flight down here, I was talking to our SID, who you guys know, the great Matt Plisga, the legend. Mm -hmm. um, but we were talking about this. And, you know, we were saying, I remember in 1994, when we went to the Final Four at Duke, there was a guy that sent a letter. It was Dick DeVinzio, who's a former Duke player. I think he's from the Pittsburgh area. But he sent a letter to every player of the four teams that were in the Final Four saying that we shouldn't play. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't play. We should go to, like, a local high school, have no TV, have no media there, um, just invite our families and play the games there because we should be getting paid. And... He asked, did you think about it? And I said, hell no. Like, there's no way I would have done that. It was a dream. The Final Four was in Charlotte, North Carolina boy, or whatever. I think these kids now may think about it more. I, I just think them and their families yeah. are so much more of understanding that this is a business. 
and that they should be getting a piece of the pie. We talked about this a couple years ago when I brought that Coach K Genesis game, and you were in the game, but you weren't listed. Yeah. And it was just your number. You number knew, five. They number knew five was, was you. I was nice, too. And you, I think if I remember our conversation correctly, you were just hyped to play yourself in a video game. Yeah. You weren't thinking about that stuff. Now... These kids think of that's what I'm saying. Like them and their fan, everything has evolved, and they think about these things more. Yeah, you know when 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 Ed O'Bannon filed the lawsuit, you think about that. I mean, he finished in '95. He filed the lawsuit. I think it made even guys back from when I played think about that. Mm -hmm. Like think about it a little bit different. The one thing that I always felt that was weird when I was in school, I think it was maybe my junior and senior year, when my jersey was sold by Nike. I did find that odd that I couldn't, like, if I wanted to get one for my younger brother or some of my family, like, I had to pay for that. Right. I thought that was screwed up. I agree. Uh, but this is what it is now, and uh, everyone has to adapt. If not, you're going to get left behind. You guys did such a great job last year of adapting, I thought, and I, I kind of felt like you might have needed, you probably won't, but to share, like, hey, guys, it's okay to, like, advance and understand where the game is going. And you guys have the success that you did in the NCAA tournament. I love the moment at the, the first four when you're like, man, I'm, you were like, I'm alive again, yeah. man. Like, this is great to be back in this thing. I forgot how awesome this was. Yeah. Now, what do you do for an encore? Because, uh, you know, there's going to be some turnover on your roster and turnover in the league. And, and it's almost like you got to get back to work. You have to keep evolving. So we were able to do what we did last year. Um, and it was a it was a testament to the hard work of my staff. We got a little lucky. Um, that we didn't have any major injuries to major guys. We had unbelievable chemistry. But the thing that I've learned is that when you're good, people are going to want your players. And so you have to continue to evolve. You know, there's a famous uh, line. I think it was Fat Joe that said it. You know, yesterday's price is not today's price. Yep. Yeah. And so it continues to evolve. And so you have to... If you have someone that's good and you can get them back, you probably have to evolve and change some things. Um, I really like my group this year. I really, really do. I think not just that we won last year, the chemistry was unbelievable and it was very real. The thing that I love is that we have some returning guys that now finally know what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. And now they can help teach the message to the new guys we have in our program. I think our chemistry is really good again. I think we have talent. Um, I, I think we'll have more quality depth. We're different in that we're bigger. The other difference is that last year we had four guards that were 22, 23, and 24 years oh. old. Mm -hmm. And now we have three guards, two of which are 18. So that's a big difference. Uh, but they're talented. We're excited about them. And they have some older guys to really look up to. You are a music guy, so I am curious. I'm going to tie this to the fact that you're one of the elder statesmen now in the uh, in <laughs> the crazy. ACC, which, which, is, which is great. I think yeah. it's great. Uh, I think you know the likes of you, Steve Forbes, Kevin Keats, kind of this you know coming up. But I realized like these guys were at schools for a really long time. You know, Jim Beheim, 1969 as an assistant. It's crazy. Do you know what the number one song, Billboard Hot 100 at the end of 1969? I have no idea. Sugar, sugar by the Archies. Okay. All right. Let's see. 80. When Mike Krzyzewski first took over at Duke, number one song in 1980, at the Ooh. end of 80. 1980. I have a guess for this one. I don't know. I would, I would, my, my, my first thought would it would be like a Michael Jackson song. Rock but... With You was actually number four. Okay. In the year end. It so, was, is it Heart of Glass? Close. It's ah. Blondie's Call Me. Ah. That was the number I knew one. It was Blondie. <laughs> that was the number one. And then uh, even even things are old now. Like I looked at Mike Bray when he took to, when he took over at Notre Dame in 2000, right? Or when we first started coaching, I think it was in 2000, right? And uh, do you know what the number one song was? 2000. 2000. I think you got this one. It wasn't Titanic, right? No, know. it wasn't. That was 1997. Okay. It was Faith Hill's Breathe. <laughs> Ooh. Santana Smooth was number two. Wow. That year. Yeah, I would have had no chance of those. These are all things that we're uh, old. <laughs> all right, so how much time do you – when do you go into – you're locked in, it's the season, when you're in Pittsburgh and watching football. Is there like a line of demarcation where you're like, I'm into what's going on with the Steelers and keeping up with what Tomlin's doing. Maybe you're hearing some stuff. And then it's like, all right, basketball mode. Maybe I'll know what the score is. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm, I, I love what I do. I love my job. I don't take it too that serious where I, 
totally go off the face of the earth and I have no idea what's going on everywhere else. I like to have balance. Yeah. I'll go to games. Once we start playing, I don't go to Steeler games anymore. Okay. Now, I'll watch it because normally we're off on Sunday, so if we're off, I'm probably going to watch it. May not watch the whole game. Right now, man, on off days or when I come home, I'm basically an Uber driver for my kids. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to their different activities. And, Dude, that is yeah. That's I yes, very relatable. As I'm shuttling a kid out into yeah. Junior Canes practice or marching yeah. band or something like that. My oldest Chosen daughter was. will turn. Um, she's 16, but in, in 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 Pennsylvania, when you turn 16, which she did in April, you don't get your license right away. You get your permit. Yes, yeah, graduated right. So it's six months. Yeah. So November 2nd, she gets her for real license, where we don't have to. And I'm so scared of it. But I'm also so excited about it. Yeah, man. Uh, t- very relatable. Very yeah. relatable. Because I'm going to be in that boat next year. They're going to shush you away here, but yeah. just real quick. Because it's different for you at Pitt than it would be if you were still by us in the, in the triangle. Mm-hmm. Travel was kind of yada, yada, yada by the commissioner in his forum this morning that the travel to California won't be that big of a deal. Eh? What, what says well, you? I, I, You've seen I, it I from a couple of different angles. Yeah, I don't know how it won't be. <laughs> I mean, you're okay. <laughs> changing, what, two time zones and yeah. all the way over. And when you leave, you're probably going to have to stay. I would assume we're going to play both teams when yeah. we're out there. Yeah, you're gonna so you probably have to get out there a little bit early to get adjusted to the time zone, the mm-hmm. time difference. Um, and then when you come back, there's an adjustment, mm-hmm. you know, with there's, the time difference and everything there's, there's a difference in how you travel and how the volleyball team travels well, and, that's, and everybody else yeah too. big time big time we're very lucky and fortunate for that coach we appreciate the time as appreciate always appreciate it man great to catch up with jeff gable he really is an honorary triangle guy like he, he, once you're here you're here and i know his brother played at carolina but his dad was a longtime coach fable i mean jeff jeff's jeff's our people we're running out of people like that in the ACC, by the way. Yeah, well, the ACC is running out of the ACC as well, Joe. I mean, you know, I hate to break it to you. That, that's that's next. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm not running out of ideas for Christmas. Do you know why? Homefield Apparel has just dropped these new bomber jackets. They're unbelievable. Here's what you do. You go to homefieldapparel.com. You use the code OG23. You save 15% on your first order. You're kind of looking at me like a little bit of a skeptic there, Anthony, but take a look at this Carolina jacket. You know me. Are you getting a Carolina jacket? I am not. Is is this what what Santa is bringing you? Because I would, (laughs) that's pretty sweet. I am not, but you are. Look at that thing. That That thing is very, very nice. The vintage stuff that they put out is always on point. Again, go to homefieldapparel.com. Use the Oh, use the promo code OG23 and save 15% on your first order. Our friends over at the Butcher's Market, they already have all of your holiday gift ideas because, man, you know, Joe and I were talking about this. What if you don't want a turkey on Thanksgiving? What if you aren't a traditionalist? What if you got a little prime rib on Thanksgiving? That's what's up. I mean, I know, I know people who do that on Christmas. But I, I suspect you're a bird guy. But, I mean, you don't have to be. No, I'm not a bird guy. You're not a bird guy? not a bird guy. What do you do? I hate turkey. You do? I hate turkey. Okay. So, here's what you do. You go to the butcher's market. You find an alternative. They have a great selection of meats. They have, I mean, they have anything that you can think of. They have there. And I've already put out the challenge. If you can find something in that store that you don't like, I will refund your money for you. Oh, I like that show. Yeah. Because every, everything we go in there and we find, we're like, oh. The chicken, unbelievable. Their homemade hot dogs, their handmade hot dogs, unbelievable. Their homemade bacon, unbelievable. The the potato skins, oh my gosh. The tortellini salad, all of these things, so good. So do yourself a favor, head over to the Butcher's Market and thebutchersmarkets.com. All right, now we're more comfortable. Do you know why? We're into the NFL picks portion of this podcast. We're gonna marry. We're gonna we're gonna conjoin our two podcasts here. Picks and pizza. We normally do every Thursday. We make NFL picks. We answer a pizza question of the week. We'll do those here. How's that sound? That sounds phenomenal. I'm it, at home. It does sound phenomenal. It sounds good to me. Feels good to me. Um, a, as always, we go through the standings all year. And if you and if you're not familiar, go to your favorite podcast platform: Apple, Spotify, Google. Search for picks and pizza. Picks plus pizza. 
you will find us. It's me and Anthony once a week, and we have a season-long bet to see who can get... Uh, if I win this bet, I get my name on a menu item on the, the digital menu at Oakwood Pizza Box. If you win the bet, you get a bottle of br- uh, brown liquor of your choice. And look at this. Last week, you went one and two. I went two and one. We are now technically tied. We're going by the record. We're not going by the money amount because you you hit a Josh McDaniels future. Wait, 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 that goes, wait, wait, That wait. goes into your account, but that does not, that could be the tiebreaker. Wait, How about that? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that could be the tiebreaker. Oh, so the, thing, the, the money th- amount could be the tiebreaker. Money amount doesn't matter. Um, it will be the tiebreaker. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So we're both 13 and 13 on the season. I went two and one. You went one and two. Um, we had been doing the Jets game every week, a prop of the week, and then a lock of the week since I was terrible at the props <laughs> and that you hit another prop last week. You're now six and two <laughs> on the year on props. So heck, if you wanted to do all props, you can do all props plus the Jets game, but no, we're not going to do that. Um, so let's kick this thing off. We've got your lock of the week. Which way are you going? All right. I'm going to lock in. I like the chargers at home. Okay. Getting, Wh- why getting three points first Alliance. I think they, they had a, they played well against the Jets. They do have to go travel back cross country. I, I love the offense, so I think they're going to come together. Herbert's great. I'd love to have him on my team. But are you picking the Chargers, or are you picking against the Lions who burned you on the road? Both. Uh, Both. I, okay. I think watching the Chargers play, I, I could see this. They're in like they had that meddling. What are they four and four in the year? Like the middle of the road. I could see them now going on a win streak. Let's get control of this thing. They got a good team. They're much better than that record. And the Lions, last time I pet them on the road, it was against Baltimore, and they got absolutely boat raced. Give right. me the home team with points. My lock of the week is the 49ers. The 49ers are coming off three straight losses. More importantly, the 49ers are coming off an open date. Give me a good coach. After an open date every single time Kyle Shanahan's a really good coach uh, look the Jaguars are fine they're whatever this isn't about them this is about the 49ers 49ers a three-point road favorite coming off of three losses and an open date if you would let me rack the rest of the year this would be my lock of the year really are you because I actually had the other side of this bet this would be my lock of the year I had the other side of the bet you are not worried about the West Coast team playing at one no, o'clock in no, Jacksonville. No, not off a not off a week off. You're no. not worried about playing the six and two Jacksonville Jaguars. Nice record, but not a, it's a bit of a mirage when you when you start going deep digging into who the Jaguars actually are. I, I do like Doug Peterson. I do think he is a good coach. But Kyle, see, that's not Urban Meyer anymore. No, I know. Kyle Shanahan, that, that's my pick. Let's go to your prop of the week. I'm actually doing an on the fly change on the prop. Give me the Tommy DeVito over 0.5 INTs, given the fact that the money does not matter here. <laughs> We're going to hit that bet. I want to bet this game so bad in so many different ways. The line on... All right, so the game. Let's go over the game. Yeah. So the Giants the, at Cowboys. The Giants are going to travel to Jerry's town and play the Cowboys. The Giants are horrendous. Of course, Daniel Jones, season-ending injury. Yeah. I think the Giants are, are have quit on their team. Have quit on the team. I think they've quit on the season. I think this is one of the worst teams we've ever seen. Like, this is an unbelievably bad team. Tommy DeVito, for those who don't know, Northeastern kid, Don Bosco Prep's finest, which if you built a team of Don Bosco Prep players. Okay. Don't get started. They were one of my rivals. In, in, in are they, re- are yeah. they really? Don't, don't get me started. Uh, his name is poor Tommy DeVito because while he was playing <laughs> at Syracuse, he got his brains beat in because they had me and you blocking for him. Ultimately, he transferred to Illinois where he had a modicum of success last year. Ends up playing for his hometown Giants. On the season, he is 17 to 27, 174 yards. One touchdown, two interceptions. So you're saying... Wait, he only has 174 yards? Wait. But he threw for 175 last week, Joe. Yes, because he had a negative appearance. <laughs> His first NFL action was two, two uh, completion, two of seven for a negative one yard against the Jets. <laughs> so you're going pick here. That's what your yeah, play give is. Give me INT. All right. INT. All I need is an INT. Feels very easy. 
Uh, I am going to swerve and go back to a home team, even though it is Matt Canada. You got to remember, Mike Tomlin never has a losing season, so he has to rack up the games that he can win. And I do believe this is one of those weeks against the Packers at home. It's three and a half. Give me my boy, my boy, Matt Canada, now calling the plays from the sideline. That's all he needed, Anthony. He just needed to get on the grass. Do you like sideline Canada more than <laughs> uh, up top Canada? They're pretty much the same. I is mean, it because the camera doesn't really see him as much because he like blends into the players so he can't be the he press can hide thing? More. He can hide more. And of course, we have our Jets pick of the week. The Jets are at the Raiders. The Raiders, Raiders going with Antonio Pierce as an interim coach. They showed they showed some serious signs of life last week under Pierce. One point home dog against a Jets team after getting waxed by the Chargers last week. We are both in agreement this week, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. I love. I actually, I like the Raiders team the rest of the way here. I'd, I'd watch this because this is like when you unleash the dogs and they're ready. They could go do their thing now. I mean, there's some good players in the Raiders. I just think McDaniel's terrible. Uh, I, I'm not saying they're going to be a playoff team, but I, they're going to pick some people off here and they're going to upset people. Max Crosby's going to give Zach Wilson. He's going to give him a lot of problems. Unleash the fury, Mitch. Unleash the fury. Send them. Let right, them so loose. We're, we're both going Raiders. We'll keep an eye on that. Again, we're looking for the OG or the Gilio menu item. We're now 13 and 13. We are all locked up this year. So let's now go to our OG, our Oakwood Pizza Box. Pizza Box question of the week. This one actually comes from Anthony, who's in the Eford Studios. Anthony, go ahead. I need to know if Ovius is eating pizza in Detroit. Are you a Detroit pizza guy, Julio? I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm 48 years old. I probably was 45 when I discovered that Detroit pizza was a thing. It became a thing recently, though. To be yeah. fair to you, like it became a thing. You have a competitor in town who does a Detroit pizza night on Monday nights. They actually do a pretty good job with it. I like Detroit pizza because I like I like all square pizza. Yeah, you like the double the double. Cup I ones. like all square pizza. I like those uh, the burnt edges. I kind of like that the thing that they do the Detroit style. Oh yeah, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, this was not something that I was familiar with uh, growing up in New Jersey. No, but Buddies has been there forever. It's just the internet didn't find Buddies for a while. Buddies, the OG Detroit pizza spot. Little known fact: same family name as mine. Don't think we're relatives. However, we are uh, pizza kin. Gus Guerra was the the founder of Buddies. Where is Buddies? Buddies is in Detroit. That's okay. the, they they like created the style based off of the automotive blue steel pans. Oh, it's about the pan. The pan is everything. Okay. The pan is a different pan than what anyone else. It's not like a Sicilian pan we see in New York. It's not like what we use here in Oakwood. Like it is totally different. So you couldn't make a Detroit style pizza, a true Detroit style pizza, if you wanted to. No, I mean, if I bought the pan, yes. Sure. The pan is about the pan is about ninety percent of what that pizza is. And that's what makes the cheese the cheese? Uh, no, the cheese is a block cheese, separate cheese, but the cheese to the edge in a blue steel pan is 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 pretty much a, that is the category type. Double cooked as well. So you're going to take like a really soft dough, wet dough, tacky dough, cook it once, pull it, sauce cheese, cook it again. And that's what's going to get crispy and burnt and sort of give you that like, when it's done right, that crunchy chew thing. I was... For me, and, and I was in one of those uh, wackadoo big stores where they make pizza. It's a, it's a, and it's not a department store. It's, it's a chain store. They make pizza, and you can go watch them make the pizza. And I thought of you yesterday because I'm like, there's way too much sauce, and there's way too much cheese on that Ooh. pizza. And I remember what you told Coach Elliot Avent. Just, just minimal. Take even less than you think of the sauce. Even less than you think. It's about half the cheese. It's about half what you think. Yeah, it really is every time. So with the Detroit style, would there be more cheese? Is that how they get it to the edges? Or you're just saying it's strictly the pan? No, no, no. You're going to take the cheese and you're going to bring it to the edge on purpose. Okay. Like you intentionally burn the cheese. So like in order for it, to do, it has to go over towards the cross. So it kind of crisp up against that steel pan. That was our Oakwood pizza box pizza question of the week. 
it is Thursday. That means, as Joe knows, Joe Ovius knows, Thursday means Oka Pizza Box is open. Go check them out on Person Street or order online, oakwoodpizzabox.com. Go in, get the square, tell them that the OG sent you. Let's get out of here with some Hey Joe questions. And look at that. Hey Joe is brought to you by the Oka Pizza Box. This fits fits in nicely. Anthony, first question is from Joe in the Eford Studios. Caleb Love is going to be at Cameron Indoor Stadium at Duke with Arizona on Friday night. Are you going to Cameron on Friday to boo or cheer Caleb Love? Oh, me personally? Yeah. Would I boo him? I don't really care enough to boo him. I want to watch him. I mean, it would be interesting to see who he is. Like, don't you want to know, like, who is this guy? Like, obviously, UNC had chemistry issues. Something was going on on campus. Don't know what it was. That's a mess. Is Caleb going to score 20 against a great Duke team, or is he going to score two? I, I We've mean, seen both. I've seen, like, who are you? Like, I'm dying to know, like, who is this guy? Like, I'm just curious. I would love to have a seat there. I'm working on my media credentials there. John Shire has not responded yet to your request. Not a pizza guy. Here's the thing I don't get about Carolina fans sometimes. But in 20 years, what are you going to remember about Caleb Love? Nothing. No. Oh, the shot. The three-point shot. The three in 20 point years, shot. you're going to remember him dotting Mark Williams yeah, 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 and yeah, making yeah, a three yeah. to end yeah. Mike Krzyzewski's career. You will not give two shits about the 2023 season and not making the NCAA tournament. You're not going to care about any of the other rumors about whatever the hell was going on last year. What you're going to care about is here's a guy who came up big for us when it mattered in 2022. That's it. Aren't you going to think about that? Let the rest of the crap go. Dear Lord. Don't you want to know what that, like that team should have been so much better last year. Yes. Why? They what? were missing Brady Maddock, who was the key to the whole team. Yeah, Brady Maddock? Is it Brady, Brady Maddock or Dirk like, Nowitzki? Brady uh, Maddock made, people talk about he's Dirk Nowitzki. Where is Brady Maddock playing right now? I think Australia. Brady Maddock made like 60. I love Australia, but it is not the NBA. <laughs> Brady Maddock made like 60% of his threes over the last 12 games of that season. He was unconscious. He was the reason things worked for them. And then Caleb Love was playing good. R.J. Davis was playing good, and Armando Baycott didn't have to do everything. So I think you should go on Friday night, bring him some flowers, bring him a sign, and bring him everything else and say, thank you. Oh, wow. All right. (laughs) Don't get me started. Don't get me started. All right, let's go to one more Hey Joe question from Butch Davis. Hey, Joe, did you know that Florida State and Miami were playing this week? My guy, Butch <laughs> Davis, the Miami architect. No. Uh, Isn't it sad? Like, I know you're a little sad. bit younger. No. I no. Because no, when I was growing up, this was the effing game. This was it. Nothing else. This was the game that mattered in college football. If I could, if I could multiply my guy, Coach Prime, and put him at different schools at the same time, <laughs> college football would be so much better. Imagine if he oh, was there. Florida State. If, if he goes to Florida State, oh, my God. What? Well, Everyone's talking about this game. This is going to be on ABC. They're going to bump off. The news is going to get canceled. They're going to put it in prime time. We're getting popcorn. We're getting Herb Street. We're getting everyone in there. And we get kn- Al Michaels in and pay him a million dollars a game. Put him on this one. And this is kn- a big one. Who knows? They might get a chance just to do that if, uh, you know, if things go. If things go as Florida State boosters have pointed out, like, we just can't compete because – we're just going to be a farm system for other coaches. We're going to lose Mike Norville because we're not going to be able to afford to. I mean, I, I don't want to go down that road. But if it works out that way, maybe maybe Coach Prime comes home. All right, let's get to some actual Hey Joe questions from our listeners. Hey Joe, this is from our guy Ken. Ovius almost went super scion yesterday with his almost truth bombs. How much would it cost to sponsor a bi weekly segment in cash or liquor equivalents? Uh, Ken, your money is no good with, with us, but your li- Liquor is so we will have to work that out together. What do you What do you say, Anthony? Go for it. Get, get, come on, get him in. Great and, friend of the program. And my man, speaking of friends of the program, my man B Bish. When are we getting a second pizza box? This sounds like someone who doesn't live close to downtown and would like to enjoy no, uh, the pizza box on can, a regular can basis. Can everybody? I mean, listen. <laughs> by all means, can anybody like just like we should do a poll? Where should it be? I'm open to I'm open to looking. I've been looking around. I don't know where to go. I don't honestly. I never thought I'd have one success. So the idea of having two successes is 
is hard to conceive of. But where should it be? We'll, we'll put it out there. We'll put it out there on the Twitter. Put it on our social media. And let's get out of here with Andrew Watkins. Hey, Joe, are there too many rivalry games on the last weekend of the college football season? Always feel interesting games don't get the hype they could if they were on another weekend. Uh, growing up, I didn't see growing up since I got here. When I got here, State and Carolina actually kind of played in the middle of the season, early in the season. Wasn't a game that ended the season. I like it at the end. I don't know if that's what he's specifically referring to. I do think some of those games like that, though, get overshadowed. Where are you on where the rivalry game should be played? He's got a great point. Put it at the beginning of the year because now everyone has apathy, right? Like, as a UNC fan, screw the season. Who gives a shit? The basketball's <laughs> almost here. We blew the game against UVA. It's over. I don't care. Duke is in, at UNC. Like, I should care because it, oh, it should be interesting. But I don't. We lost to UVA and we lost to Georgia State. <laughs> if you put this game before UVA, I'd be like, ah, ha, ha, let's get them. All right, let's get out of here. We did it. Appreciate you. And we knocked out our picks and pizza all in one fell swoop. If you haven't done so already, follow us right there on the YouTubes. Please hit subscribe. And of course, five stars only. Appreciate it, everyone out there. And yeah, if you have a suggestion for where the pizza box should be, yeah. throw it under there too. We'll, we'll take Send it under it. consideration. See you guys on Monday.